Okay, here we have the second revision of this board. The second revision, the first one I didn't uh, document when I built it. I basically just built it, got it working, and um, then after I built it, I tried to document it, which it did not work out well. I transferred a wire to wire across to a breadboard at something like 3 a.m. in the morning. These are really crap breadboards, by the way. I don't recommend these at all. This is from Altronics, this breadboard. It is absolute garbage. It won't handle any current at all. It's really only good for signal stuff. But um, uh, that's Altronics for you. Cheap garbage. But these things happen. Oh, there was a bug in this board, by the way. This is what happens when you work at 3 in the morning. I just, I've been so busy, I've just been working really late into the night. But um, there's somewhere in this board there's a bug. And because I didn't actually document the board, without a schematic it was almost impossible for me to follow what I'd done. So I thought, well, rather than trying to nut out the problems of this board, I'd just start again and uh, redesign the thing from scratch. But this time I actually documented everything I did while I was building it. This board's different in, from the first revision because... The first revision had no electronic brake, so basically when you went forward, it would go forward and then it would run on when you stopped. Um, when you hit the, the limit switches, it would run on. So I made a few changes and had this board so the electronic braking was incorporated. There was a couple of things I didn't consider, a couple of little bugs, but um, nothing major. Uh, this one also has uh, a different style of current limiting. With the old one, when the current limit was hit, the motor would shut down for maybe two or three seconds and then restart. But the customer wanted it to actually be physically reset, and I suppose in hindsight that makes complete sense. Because if there's a problem with the motor and it goes over current, it doesn't go over current for no reason. So we made the changes and uh, here we are with revision, well, three. We've got forward, which is the A button. A to go forward. B to go backwards. C to stop the motor straight away. As soon as we hit the C button, it'll stop. Now, there's two modes for this. It can either go momentary, which is you press the button, it'll go for a second, then it'll stop. There's another mode which is latching, which is to set up on the board. So when you press the A button, the motor will keep going until you either press the C button to stop it or you press the B button to change the direction. It goes over current or it hits a limit switch. Now there's two limit switches, one for forward and one for back. So if we're going forward, I'll just slow the motor down. So we're going forward at the moment. It hits the forward limit switch. Forward button's now locked out to us. All we can do is go backwards. We go backwards and we hit the backwards limit switch. The backwards switch is locked out to us. And all we can do is go forwards. So the limit switches are in place. And uh, one thing I didn't consider when I actually designed the circuit was the run on from the limit switches. Like I had the electronic braking hooked up to the forward and reverse, but I didn't even consider the limit switches. I just figured when they stopped, everything would shut down with it. But um, because I did them differently, uh, it didn't work like that. So I had to make some changes to the board. I'll just show you what would happen so you can see what I'm talking about. It's never good to play with electronics like this. If you touch something, you can blow it up. But um, I'm just going to speed it up so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, what would happen, see how we've got the electronic braking for forward and reverse. This is what would happen. You notice what happened then? When it hit the limit switch, it had run on. It's just one of those little bugs that you don't even really think about until you're, you're testing the unit out and uh, suddenly you think, well, I don't really know what applications people are going to be using these for. I mean, the way I see a limit switch is once the limit switch is hit, that's the absolute maximum the motor can go. It has to stop. Something has to happen. 
Um, in some of the Chinese ones I tested, uh, they, when the limit switch was hit, they just ran on. So for this one, I decided, well, because it's going to be generic, I'm not always sure how the customer is going to be using the product. So I figured best to have the electronic braking in place. So on the off chance that something did happen, it stops straight away when it hits the limit switch. See? Forward limit switch, bang, stops straight away. Backward limit switch, stops straight away. So that's what I wanted to achieve with this second revision, as well as the current limit, which I'll show you. I'll just stop down a bit. Now what I've done here, I've gone over current. Now how I did that was I pressed the A button, and while it was moving forward, I straight away pressed the B button, which is from forward to reverse. And when you go from forward to reverse, the current drawer is much greater than even, well, the stall current. So straight away it's triggered the overcurrent limit, which means everything's locked out. And unlike the old one, which uh, would start after two or three seconds, this one's actually locked out until we reset it. So if something's wrong, then we have to reset it. So we've got four buttons on the control. We've got A, which is forward, B, which is reverse, C, which is stop, and D, which is reset. So I've just triggered it again. Press D. Trigger it again. Press D to reset it. Trigger that again. Press D to reset. Um, the reason I built it like this was, uh, well, it was a customer request that the, the current limit was able to be reset. But um, the, the customer wasn't so concerned with the run on when it hit the limit switches because they had a physical barrier that it actually hits. But when I thought about it, I thought, well, I don't know what people are going to use these for. Because this customer, while it's been specifically designed for one customer, it's really a generic product. And to make it generic, I had to incorporate all the things that I thought the people would want. I, the customer doesn't require the current limit that this will put out. They only need, I think, about 10 amps maximum. But uh, in order to be generic, I just make it so it can be used by everybody for a variety of different things. And the customer also only wants a small quantity, and the quantity they want's not really viable to build. So uh, I figure by making that available to everybody, I can increase the quantity and keep the cost down, and um, yeah, add another controller to my to my list of growing controllers. Um, We've also got lockout. No, that's the wrong control. We can have up to six controllers on this module, by the way. So that's a, a random control I just pulled from the packet. So it won't do a thing, it's all locked out. But you can see on the receiver board there's a light that says yes, there's another controller here, but no, it's being ignored because it's given the wrong codes. It's easy to teach it just by pushing the button on the board and uh, pushing any button on the control. So there you have it, we've got forward, we've got reverse, we've got overcurrent, reset, which is the D button, and C which is stop. So if we push C, straight away stops. And uh, that's all it is. As soon as we power it up, I'll just turn it off, give it a few seconds for the capacitors to discharge. When we switch it on, it goes straight into its ready state, which is this LED. That tells us that everything's okay and that everything's working perfectly. Uh, this one tells us that there's a problem. So, as I showed you before, when I take it over current, everything's locked out. So we need to press D to reset it. Now with the with the limit switches, I've just slowed it down so you can see how it works. We've got two limit switches. We've got a forward limit switch and a reverse limit switch. When the forward limit switch is pressed, it'll shut down. And all you can do is press reverse until the reverse limit switch is used. 
but you don't have to use the limit switches if you don't want it. It'll operate just fine without them. So it really is now a generic product. The current limits um, adjustable from zero up to 33 amps. The control goes from zero to 100 with braking. And that's it. So uh, that's the hopefully the last revision of this I have to make. I'm pretty much sick of looking at it, but um, all I've got to do now is drop the board, get a prototype, build it, check that everything's functional, um, and if that's okay, get into a production run, and uh, then it'll be ready for sale. Like I hope to be able to do it really cheaply. Um, yeah, I, I won't really know yet until I do a full costing of the boards, the assembly, and whatnot. Um, that's pretty much it. Nice and simple and reliable. I've had the thing running now for oh, three days, just cycling it forward, reverse, triggering the current limit, and rock solid, which is. You know what everybody wants. I want something that's you know usable long term and uh, reliable. Feel we've achieved that, and uh, now I can walk away from this and never look at it again. Hmm.